What's up, guys? Brett Okamoto with ESPN, joined by UFC flyweight Aaron Blanchfield, who is back from Singapore and her win over Talia Santos. Um, sixth win in a row. Everything's going very well in the UFC. It was your first fight out of the United States, so I want to start with that. Um, how was the uh, the entire experience of going over to Singapore and having a, a big fight on UFC Fight Night? Yeah, no, it was really cool. You know, I went out like two weeks early just to adjust uh, like to the time difference and obviously being somewhere uh, so different. Um, but, you know, I feel like I was happy I went out early. I feel like I was adjusted and um, yeah, it was awesome. It was an awesome time, great experience. I'm like trying to put myself in that situation and decide like, I could see it being really great. Like go there, get in the mindset of like, I'm here to do a job, but like I'm away from everything that's familiar and everything. Or I could see it just being awful and being like, get me to the fight, get me to the fight, get me to the fight. Like, was it kind of one extreme or the other, or was it somewhere in the middle for you? Um, I felt for me, it was somewhere in the middle. You know, the first week was kind of nice. Was like, I would just basically train and then, like, sightsee. So I was kind of just, like, seeing the city and seeing what was around. Um, and just, like, you know, I, I never been to that that part of the world before. So I feel like there was a lot for me to see. And um, so I feel like the first week was nice, um, being able to just train and then having pretty much the rest of my day to do whatever. Um, and then, you know, fight week was kind of like typical fight week. I had like my same obligations that I always have to do. Um, so for me, I feel like it, it was cool. I mean, I don't know if I'd want to do that for every fight, you know, but, um, but it was definitely a unique experience. How about, uh, just like, like flying back? Um, I mean, obviously we can tell you were in a fight, um, which is not always the case after, after your fights, but we can tell on this one, um, it was a back and forth mm -hmm. fight, at least a really back and forth first round. How was it like just kind of coming home and, and dealing with sort of like the after effects of a fist fight? Yeah, I mean, the, the flight home was, uh, I mean, obviously it was, it was a super long flight, like going there and coming home. Um, and my face was on, was like blew up from, uh, from the flying and uh, definitely got a couple of stares. Um, but, you know, I mean, I, I felt pretty, I mean, I wasn't that bad overall. Uh, it definitely could be worse. It's not like I have anything, like, like my actual body. Like, and so it was just basically my face that, that blew up. Um, but yeah, I mean, nothing crazy. Yeah. I always wonder this when, um, because to me, I could see this being a tough situation to be in when you have a fight scheduled with somebody like you did with Talia Santos earlier this year. And then mm -hmm. she has she has to withdraw and you're given a really, really tough opponent. And then it's like you beat that opponent and then you're kind of like right back where you started and you get the same opponent. And like to me, that would almost create a mental hurdle of just like, well, what, what was my last fight for then? You know, like I would always kind of want to see, like, what did I gain from my last fight? And it's like, if I just gained the fight that I already had, like that would be something that would, would kind of mess with me a little bit. Like, did you have any of that? Like going right back into camp for the same person and, and just feeling like, what, what, what was, what was the, like, what, why did the last fight matter? Was that at all a challenge for you? Um, no, I, I definitely didn't feel like that. Um, you know, and draws is a little bit of like, I guess a wild card fight. Like I obviously didn't expect to fight her. Um, you know, she goes back and forth between weight classes a lot. So she's, I know she's ranked in um in the flyweight division, but uh, I think at the time she was like ranked number three. And Polly was still above her. And even when I uh well when when we were scheduled to fight the first time, she was above her. And then this time ended up being a little bit above her. But um yeah, I feel like as long as I'm fighting people in the top five, they're all great fights and they're all great experience. And I could learn something from each fight. And obviously Talia was a super tough fight, so I feel like when I go back to the gym um and I get back to work, there are a few things to learn from that fight. So I feel like that wasn't, it's not really like, oh, like I have to do this again, or I didn't gain anything. Like every fight, there's, there's something to gain. And uh, that was definitely the attitude that I went into that with. What do you think you gained in this one? Oh, uh, yeah. I think it's just like experience against someone, uh, you know, a high level fighter. You know, she's someone that a lot of people thought beat Valentina. Um, she's a great fighter in her own right. And I feel like I, I dropped, you know, I dropped that first round. I was able to come back and adjust, um, which is something a lot of people I feel like can't really do. So that's something I feel like I was able to do. And, and I already kind of knew that I'd done that in the past, but I haven't done it at this level. So that was uh, nice to be able to do. And, um, and I feel like I needed to go back and watch the fight a couple of times to really see all like the little technical things I want to get better at. But, um, but yeah, I feel like I've improved in that. Have you watched it back yet? yeah i have watched it back um yeah you know it was, just, it was a super pretty fight uh, i did what i had to do to win i, I definitely um would want to you know obviously every fight i want to finish and i was 
uh, a little disappointed and not be able to get to certain positions that I wanted to. But, um, you know, I feel like I fought smart and that's what got me the win. Coming out of the first round, did you feel like you were losing? Like, did that feel like a, a, a her round? Yeah, no, I definitely felt like I lost that round. I mean, I feel like I'm pretty realistic with myself and my coaches are too. I feel like I definitely dropped that round. I mean, it's not the first time in my career that I've dropped the first round and came back and won anyway. So I knew I just needed to adjust. So I came back to the corner, like ready to listen. Um, and I feel like I made those adjustments. Um, and was able to take the fight. Yeah. Do you think that that's um, like you mentioned, some people aren't able to do that. And especially uh -huh. like on the highest um, stage, like you mentioned, like this is not a regional fight. This is not like your second fight in the UFC. This is like, potentially a title contenders fight. And so to feel like, uh oh, I've lost a round. I have two left, which means simple math, you got to win the next two. Um, how did it feel in that moment? It felt like you felt at home though? You felt like, uh, cause like you said, some people can't do that. Like how, how were you kind of, what was going through your mind when, when you were in that position? I definitely felt at home. I feel like my last couple of fights, I felt a lot more comfortable in the UFC. Like I, I get into the cage and it's just like, I could tell it's like just another, another day. Like at work, you know, I get another fight um, and I feel comfortable in there. So I think that's, that's why I was able to kind of think I was ready to get back to the corner and, and see what they thought. And cause I know obviously like your corners can see things that you're not seeing in the fight. So I was, I was ready to listen. Um, and, you know, I, they were telling me basically like kind of focus a little bit more on my speed, not worry about like trying to hit her hard. Cause I think I was uh, kind of just getting a little outpaced there. Um, and kind of just being like not worrying about hitting, you yeah, not worry about hitting hard, just kind of keeping the volume up and outpacing her there and kind of letting uh, maybe set up my takedowns. Obviously, that was still hard to do, um, but it kind of allowed me to control the pace of the fight and, and get to the positions I needed to. The um, I mean, it was a first question this being asked you, of course, is like, were you surprised at the at the level of takedown defense that she had? Because, of course, that's what everybody is noticing during the fight. We're used to seeing you take someone down and just do whatever you want. And so when that doesn't happen, that's that's obviously like very glaring to the rest of us. Um, what was going on in your mind and why was she so difficult to take down? Well, you know, I feel like in the moment, I wasn't really sure. I felt super deep on those takedowns and I felt like I was so close every time. I think that's why I was so persistent on them. It's not like I felt completely stuck where I was like, oh, this is not working. Like, let me just abandon this. Like, I was getting my hands connected. I was uh, using my head position, getting to angles. You know, when I watch it over, she was she was either good about getting the underhooks right away and stopping the takedown or getting overhooks and, like, pulling me up. Um, so you can see she was definitely ready for it. And then she also wasn't really doing anything after she defended. She would kind of, like, defend it and then just stand there. And then we just I just feel like hitting her uh, on the cage, kneeing her punching her so I was like controlling the position that she wasn't really being offensive herself which I think makes it when they're not really fighting you back sometimes make it harder to do anything to them because they're purely defensive and then obviously if they're a good fighter their defense is good so um it leaves a little less openings versus if she tried to open up and maybe do some like kind of like the one takedown she tried to get on me she ended up throwing herself on the floor so like if she was maybe a little bit more offensive I would maybe be able to get some more stuff off but that's also on me to kind of create the opening so you know, I tried my best. It, it didn't really work in the takedown sense, but it still gave me the control and um, dominant position. Yeah, I mean, I guess, like, like, like you said, it's on you to create the openings. But, like, when you look at the fight itself, um, obviously you won. So you get the victory. You found a, a way to win. But, like, do you look at it as, like, man, I can't go – I can't go 0 for 14 on takedown attempts. Like that can't happen. Or are you like, hey, that might happen. Like, so like these girls are trying to defend takedowns. Like, I, I guess like when you when you think of just how strong your grappling is, are you like, I need to find a way to convert and, and execute my game plan? Or you're like, hey, that's not going to work every time. Yeah, you know, I mean, obviously I'm not happy with that. Um, I'm sure when I, when I want to get back to training with, with my wrestling coach, there'll be things that want me to adjust um, so that doesn't happen again. Um, I mean, obviously, it's nice to know if, even if I can't get a takedown, but I'm still going to win the fight. Um, and, yeah, it's something I knew already, but obviously, you don't always know until you're put in that position. Um, so it's definitely not something I'd want to happen again. Um, but I know I can win a fight without getting a takedown. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you've certainly proved that. And in terms of, like, comparing it to some of your other performances, obviously, you've had performances where you just ran through people. But Talia Santos is also very good. Like, in terms of the amount of pride or um, – like the level of the sense of accomplishment that you've had in some of your fights, is this one pretty high up there or is it kind of in the middle? Where, where is that? Uh, you know, I feel like initially, like right after the fight, I definitely wasn't like happy with it. I, obviously you love going into there and running right through someone and kind of like proving 
point. But, um, you know, even my coaches are like, you need hard fights like that. You need fights that are going to push you and uh, kind of show things that you need to improve it on yourself. So I feel like uh, it's one of those fights that I was definitely a little bit annoyed myself with, but I feel like in the long run, it'll happen. What do you, what about the fans? Are they still telling you you're a monster or they're like, Oh, see, you weren't that good. Anyway, what are the fans saying about it? Um, yeah, I feel like I haven't really gotten too much hate, maybe a little bit that people were saying that she got more damage or this and that. But I, I mean, if you watch the fight, I definitely won the second and third and I was controlling the positions. Um, yeah, I feel like I still kept up the pace of the fight. It's not like it was super lackluster or boring or anything. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm happy with it. You know, the fans are always going to say what they say. Was there a little sense of relief when they were reading the scorecards? Because you just never know, right? It looked like you were just like, okay, okay, good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, you know, <laughs> definitely. I, I felt like I felt like I won the fight. But you never know. You feel like I feel like every week you see a fight that looks like, oh, like, they won that. Like, you, you can always question it. It doesn't seem right. Um, so I was definitely a little bit nervous going to scorecards. You know, my coaches were confident I won. And I felt like I won the fight. Uh, you never really know until, until it's announced. How about the UFC and like the matchmakers and how they're viewing the fight? Do you like where obviously we have another big fight, flyweight fight this weekend? Sort of what is your outlook on kind of the landscape of 125 right now and where you fit into it? Yeah, you know, I feel like our fight, me and Tyler's fight was a big one. And then the Rosa Minoan is also a big fight that could possibly a contender fight. Um, and then I feel like you need to see how the Valentina and Grosso fight goes. I feel like there's a couple with these three fights like, that are happening back to back. I feel like anyone could be fighting for the title next. It's, it kind of just gets the other cards play. Do you want to be out there kind of campaigning for for it? Or either just like, you know, we'll let these two fights happen and, and then the UFC will make a decision? Or do you feel like I need to try to influence that decision by going out and talking and maybe being in Vegas or whatever the case is? Like, do you, do you feel like a need to do any of that? Yeah, I called for it. I called out for the title um, right after I won my fight. And, um, you know, everyone knows that's what, that's what I want next. I want that title fight. And I feel like I'll be ready for it if they give it to me next. Obviously, I don't make those final decisions. And all I could do is go and win fights. And I've been doing that. So I feel like I kind of made my statements. Um, so I feel like there's not much left to be done. I feel like in my sense, I've, I've, done, I've done the work and I've called for those fights. And they know I want it. So I have to see what happens. I'd be curious to ask you... Um... You know, Grasso um, upset Valentina. A lot of people didn't see that coming. Obviously, Valentina is going to come back, and we're going to see how she deals with that adversity. And now you have Rose coming up, and Manone has looked uh, obviously so good. Stylistically, and just kind of how you view all four of them, who do you view would be the toughest fight? What is the greatest challenge for you out of those four? Um, you know, I don't feel like any – maybe individuals be like the toughest fight. I feel like they're all going to have their different strengths and weaknesses that will present their own challenges. I feel like especially at this level, everyone's so good and maybe people are a little bit better at certain things than others, but I feel like they all would have their own like strength. Even like, I feel like some of some of their questions are like, oh, who's your hardest fight? Like there's nobody that's necessarily your hardest fight. I feel like they all bring out different parts of you. Um, and I feel like that's what any of those girls will do. They just bring out a, a different fight. When you come out of a fight like that, and it's almost weird for me to be asking these questions because it's almost like it sounds like you lost, you didn't, you won. But like, um, does it almost give you pause of like, uh, dang, I, I, I have some stuff that I need to work on in order to be a champion. Like, I want to win a belt and I want to hold it for a long time. Like, I, I see some things that I need to improve. Like, does it give you that feeling of like, oh, you know, some time in the gym wouldn't be the worst thing. If I have to fight before a title fight, it wouldn't be the worst thing. Are you like, no, I'm I'm completely ready to go. Like, I'm ready for the title fight right now. Uh, I feel like I almost feel both. Like if I got title fight next, I that was pretty much ready for that. If I had to fight again, then I fight again. Um, you know, gain more experience. Um, you know, I feel like after every fight, I always feel like there's stuff to improve. Um, even like fights you win or if you dominantly win them, there's probably something you messed up along the way. Um, so I feel like after every fight, I go in with that mindset. Well, last thing I'll ask you, and I don't know, maybe um they'll have to cut this part of the interview because I don't know if everybody knows about it, but are you going to uh, ESPN campus to do some commentary work in a couple of weeks? Oh yeah, I, I have, um, yeah, I've been in contact with um, one of the people from ESPN and I, plan on, I think there's one in, uh, in Connecticut that I'm going to be going up to. So like, are you, is it, is it for like the Valentina Grosso fight? Like, are you going to be like doing commentary or what do you, what do you, will you be doing for it? Um, I'm not a 
exactly sure what I'll be doing yet. Um, he do, I think I'm gonna be doing a couple like shows, like maybe like a Sports Center, some ESPN thing. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure. I just reached out. I think like uh, literally like, the other day, like right when I got back from Singapore. Um, but you know, some, I've always kind of wanted to get into commentary or into broadcasting in some type of way. So um, yeah, they reached out to me, and I was, I was definitely going to do it. Nice, nice. So that is something you thought about be before, like even prior to fighting, like it's kind of like an interest of yours or you just kind of see it like it goes sort of hand in hand with it? It, it kind of was sort of hand in hand. I feel like once I got into fighting, um, when I thought about what I'd want to do afterwards, um, I feel like broadcasting or like commentating, since I'm so, I, I love the sport and I love, like even when I'm watching the fights, I'm always like, I feel like my mind's buzzing about what, I, what, I, like what I'm seeing, so. Um, that's something I've always kind of wanted to get into. And uh, I have done some commentating for like some local grappling shows and stuff like that. And um, I just would love to get some more experience in it and kind of like grow in that as well. Well, that'd be fun. Uh, I mean, I know you've been talking about it uh, really ever since Singapore. And then now afterwards, it's kind of like a flyweight showcase right now over the, this like month, you know, as you guys. Yeah. And now it's Paris. And now, of course, it's the title fight in Vegas. So just kind of being um, included in that and doing some commentary audit. It's, it's like a cool month for that weight class. So congratulations yeah. on getting it started off with a victory of your own in Singapore. And then um, I Thank guess you. we'll, we'll see plenty of you in Bristol during that week when you're up there commentary, and then we'll find out what's going to happen at this 125. but congratulations again on the win. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Aaron. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube for live streaming sports and premium content. Subscribe to ESPN plus.